Okay, today we're going to find the intersection of two planes. And I wanted to go through an example completely so you could see uh, just how to work through this from start to finish in a clear manner. And, and it's an example different than I've shown in class. So here are the two equations of the two planes. We've got uh, 2x minus 3y plus z equals 5 and 3x plus 2y minus 2z equals negative 3. Now the process of finding the intersection of two planes involves finding two pieces of information. If you remember, the intersection of two planes will always be a line. And what we need to do to find the line, or the equations of the line, is to determine a point on the line. In other words, a point that's on both planes. And we also need to find the direction vector of the line. So, first thing we're going to do, number one, we need to find a point on both planes. The way we're going to do that is by eliminating a variable in these two equations. This is similar to or like when you solve a system of equations. So in this case what we can do is to um, look at the variables and decide which variable would be easiest to eliminate. It appears that the z would be pretty easy to eliminate if we multiply the first equation through by 2. So we're going to multiply the first equation through by 2. When we do that, we'll rewrite it over here. We get 4x minus 6y plus 2z equals 10. And rewriting the bottom one, we get 3x plus 2y minus 2z equals negative 3. Adding these together, we see that the z's cancel. And we end up with 7x minus 4y equals 7. OK, our second step, usually, and this is part of the first step here, but we're going to solve, so then solve the resulting equation for one of the variables. Okay, so here it would probably be easiest for us to solve for y, since we'd be divided by a 4 on the bottom. That would give us a little bit nicer numbers, but uh, you can make your choice. It does not matter what you solve for. So I'm going to subtract the 7x to the other side. I get negative 4y equals 7 minus 7x, and now dividing by a negative 4, we get y equals 7 minus 7x over negative 4. We can now choose a value. Really, it's choose any value. for the variable on the right. This will determine a point on both planes. I'll show you what I mean. So let's take a look at this. So uh, if we let x be equal to, and we can make a choice here that might make it work out nicely here. Um, let's see, if we make x equal to 1, then y will equal 7 minus 7 over negative 4, or 0. So now we have an x value and a y value. We need now to find the corresponding z value. For that, we're going to go back to one of the original equations up here. And probably be easiest to use the first equation. So why don't we do that? Let me move down a little bit. So let's see here. If we put um, the x value of 1 in, we have 2 times 1. 
minus 3 times the y value of 0 plus the z we don't know yet equals 5. All right, we can subtract this 2 from both sides. We see that the 3 times 0 is going to cancel. And we get, moving down a little bit, uh, z equals 3. OK, from this we get our point on both planes, which in this case will be, let's see, x is 1, y is 0, and z is 3. So this is one piece of information we're glad to find. The next thing we need to do is to verify that this indeed works in both planes. So let's just check that it works in both planes. Maybe I'll specify that here, that it works in both plane equations. Let me do that. Let's see here. So let me move it up a little bit. Let's see what those equations are again. 2x minus 3y plus c equals 5. We're going to take that and um, maybe you should write them again down here so it's easier to see. All right, so to check in the first equation, let's go ahead and put the point in. So we got 2 times 1 minus 3 times 0 plus 3 equals 2 plus 3 or 5. So it checks in the first equation. For the second equation, we've got 3 times 1 plus 2 times 0 mi minus 2 times 3. That gives us 3 minus 6 which is a negative 3, and that's what it's supposed to be. So we check that one off as well. So this is one of an infinite number of points that's on this line of intersection that's on both planes. OK, so the next step is to find the direction vector of this line of intersection. So let's put that down here. So to find the direction vector. of the line of intersection. Now, we've got to think about uh, what we need to do to find this. Um, the direction vector of the line is parallel to this line. The line happens to be in both planes. And if the line is in both planes, it must be orthogonal to or perpendicular to the normal vector of both planes. Now if that's the case, then we should be able to think about this and come up with a way to calculate this direction vector. It has to be essentially orthogonal to both normal vectors. Now, How can we find a vector that is orthogonal to both normal vectors? Well, as you may remember from class, um, we're going to use the cross product. So the direction vector B is going to be equal to N1, the normal of the first plane, crossed with N2, the normal vector of the second plane. Now where do we get these normal vectors from? <laughs> well, turns out that we're able to use the coefficients of the x, y, and z in the plane equation to read off the normal vectors. So for the first equation, or for the first plane equation, which maybe I'll label 1 up here, the normal vector would be two comma negative three comma one. And for the second equation, which I'll label two, n2 would be equal to 3 comma 2 comma negative 2. OK, so now we're ready to go ahead and use these two normal vectors to find our direction vector. So v equals the cross product of the two normal vectors, which here we're going to use the determinant form to find this cross product. So we've got our i, j, and k. Uh, n1 was 2, negative 3, 1. n2 is 3, 2, negative 2. OK, from that, we cross out the first column in the first row and use this little 
2 by 2 to find that uh, the coefficient of i will be th negative 3 times negative 2, 6, minus 2 times 1, minus 2i, minus, remember that we alternate signs here, cross off the middle column and the first row, and we end up with 2 times negative 2, or negative 4, minus 3 times 1, or 3, j, plus, so it's plus, minus, plus, and then we cross off the k column, and we're going to um, get 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 3 times negative 3, which is a negative 9, k. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this. 6 minus 2 is 4. I, we have a negative 7 here, but it's a negative in front, so plus 7j. And then we have 4 minus a negative 9, or 4 plus 9, plus 13k. And here we have our direction vector for the line of intersection. OK, well, let's go ahead now and use the point from above, which I'll write down here again. Uh, maybe I'll put it over here. So our point on the line of intersection was 1, 0, 3. We can use that to come up with the parametric equations of the line of intersection. So line of intersection x equals 1 from our point plus 4t, 4 coming from our direction vector. This is like the slope in the x direction. Remember, the direction vector is like your slope. y equals 0, which I don't need to write, plus 7t or just 7t. And z equals 3 plus 13t. And 13 coming from our direction vector, the k component, in the z direction. All right, so this is our parametric set of equations for our line of intersection. Now we have to check and see that it worked. So that, of course, we're going to verify this in a moment uh, visually. But uh, first, I wanted to take a moment to uh, show you that you can algebraically check this as well. All we need to do is to find a second point on the line of intersection and verify that it works in both plane equations. So here, let's go ahead and write the second point by just choosing a value. Um, let's see, I'm going to use green here. So let's let um, t equal 1, just another value other than 0. And if you do that, x will be equal to 1 plus 4, or 5. y will be equal to 7 times 1, or 7. And z is equal to 3 plus 13, or 16. This gives us another point on the line of intersection, or at least it should be, 5, 7, 16. And all we have to do is check that this point is also going to satisfy both equations of the two planes above. Now to make it easier, I'm going to write them again down here. All right, here's our check. So let's see, we've got 2 times x, which is 5, minus 3 times the y value, which is 7, plus 16, our z value. OK, we want to know if it's 5. We're not going to assume that it is. So let's go ahead and calculate this. We get 10 minus 21 plus 16. That, if we add the two positive values, gives us 26 minus 21 which is 5. Now that's what it's supposed to be. Check. OK, the second one, we're going to put in that point into the second equation, 3 times 5 plus 2 times 7 minus 2 times 16, the z value, equals 15 plus 14 minus 32. 15 plus 14 is 29 minus 32 gives me negative 3. That checks as well. So algebraically, we know that this line of intersection that we have here indeed works, indeed satisfies the uh, two plane equations. OK, so what I'd like to do next is to show you how to verify that this uh, line of intersection works visually using the CalcPlot 3D applet. 
So we can find the CalcPlot 3D applet uh, on the web and um, you can search for CalcPlot 3D and I'm sure you'll be able to find it on Google or you can go to my main web page which um, I can show you or you, you can see uh, elsewhere. Okay, so what, what we want to do is to, once we're in the applet, is to clear the graph. We're going to use this, this um, clear the graph button right here and when we do that we can then enter our plane equations. Now the plane equations we actually will want to solve for z. So let's go back to our notebook and do that. So we're going to take these two and solve them for z. So let's see, the first one's pretty easy. You put it up here. Um, moving all the, t the x term and the y term to the other side, we get z equals 5 minus 2x plus 3y. So there's one equation of a plane that we can easily enter. The other one, I can move the, the negative 2z to the other side and then add the 3 over and then divide by 2 so I get z equals 3x plus 2y plus 3 all divided by 2. I've got a positive 2z over here if I move the negative 2z over to the right and so I'm just dividing by 2. So this puts it in a linear form that makes it easy to enter into the applet. All right, let's enter these two in and see what the uh, uh, planes look like, and then we can enter our line of intersection here and see if it looks good there. So going back to our applet, we're going to enter in here the first equation. This is 5 minus 2x plus 3y. Let's graph that one over here and rotate it around and see what the plane looks like. Okay, looks like a plane anyway. Okay, then we're going to come down here. We're going to enter the second one. Remember that one when we solved for z gave us uh, parenthesis uh, 3x plus 2y plus 3 divided by 2. And looking at the graph, we see we get to see the intersection pretty nicely. And the intersection does look like it must be a straight line there. Okay. Sometimes it's necessary to zoom out using the zoom out button. You can do that here, although it wasn't necessary. But in order to see the intersection well, we might need to do that. Okay, now we're ready to enter the line of intersection. So let's come up here to graph and add a space curve. And we'll move this over as well so we can see it well. All right, so what we're going to do is to um, enter in the x, y, and z uh, functions of t here. This, these are the uh, parametric equations we came up with. So we've got 1 plus 4t. We've got 7t for y. And for z, we've got 3 plus 13t. Okay, then choosing t, uh, t's range of values that it's going to try for, negative 10 to 10 is quite sufficient, 100 steps. Since it's a straight line, probably not necessary, but we'll leave it there. And um, I usually like this to be a constant primary color since it's a straight line, so I'll click there. And that happens to also graph when I click there. And you can see now that, at least now, it looks like a pretty good fit for the line of intersection. Let's rotate it around and convince ourselves that it looks like it's in the right place looks like it is. Okay, now what you're going to do is um, get a good view that you see shows that it's the line of intersection. Be sure that you're not just rotating an incorrect graph uh, until it looks like it is because I will know the difference. But uh, once you do that, you can actually print the results pretty nicely by choosing the file and the print graph option. You enter your name to identify your printout and once you click OK, it will print the graph along with the plane equations that you used for your equation and your um, space curve specification. So it'll make all that very clear on your printout, which makes it makes it easier for me to grade. So that's what I'd like you to do here. Cancel that, and um, again, you're going to do this for your for your problem that you've done in the homework. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.